Hi, Relaxed Recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain a biographical romantic drama film called Vita and Virginia. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the early 1920s, we see a famous novelist named Vita and her diplomat husband, Harold, attending a radio interview. When asked how modern marriage should be, Harold explains that marriage is like a plant that requires regular nurturing to grow. Vita, on the other hand, claims that marriage is challenging to manage, since husbands nowadays believe that they're the plant and the wife is the soil. Elsewhere, another great novelist from the era named Virginia Woolf is listening to Vita's radio interview while working on her manuscript. Following the interview, Vita and Harold leave the radio station and return home. Vita then goes to see her mother with her two sons. She informs her mother that she will be attending a party later that night, where her favorite author, Virginia, will be present. Vita claims that she adores her and wants to meet her badly. But on the other hand, her mother criticizes her upcoming novel and tells her not to publish it since it might harm her reputation. Furthermore, she advises Vita not to attend the party because those people are beneath them and Virginia has a reputation for being quite insane. She also reminds Vita about the time she eloped to France with a girl named Violet while dressed in men's clothes. On top of that, her mother threatens Vita, saying that if she doesn't comply, she will stop giving her money and will even take her sons away. However, Vita assures her that she will never do something silly like that again. Regardless, Vita ignores her mother's advice and attends the party that evening. The party is being hosted by Virginia's sister, Nessa, and her husband, Clive. There, she approaches Virginia and immediately strikes up a conversation with her. Virginia then tells Vita that she listened to her interview this morning, and Vita responds that she has also read Virginia's latest novel. When Virginia questions why Vita's books sell more than hers, she answers that popularity was never a sign of genius. After that, Nessa appears and takes Virginia to the dance floor, while Vita simply stares at her. Vita returns home the following morning and kisses her husband. She then excitingly tells Harold about Virginia and expresses her admiration for her personality. She even says that she wants to ask Virginia to join her writer's club, but Harold isn't too thrilled about this idea. Nevertheless, Vita sits down with her typewriter to write a letter to Virginia. She expresses her affection for her and invites her to join her writer's club. On the other hand, Virginia's husband Leonard tells her to stay away from Vita because she only wants to utilize her intellect and exploit her. And following her husband's advice, Virginia writes back to Vita, explaining that she does not want to be a member of her writer's club. Despite this, Vita doesn't give up and writes a poem for Virginia. She then gives the poem to her as a present and asks Virginia to publish it in her name. However, Leonard is not pleased with this and he prevents Virginia from publishing the poem. Meanwhile, Vita's desire for Virginia becomes stronger by the day. She continues to write her letters and invites her to her house, although Virginia does not respond much. However, Vita persists in her efforts and eventually shows up at Virginia's house to meet her. Leonard informs her that Virginia is writing and asks her to come back later. Just then, Virginia walks out of the room and notices her. When she asks Vita if she will write for her, Vita eagerly accepts and says she's eager to do anything for Virginia because she adores her. Following this, Virginia also starts to develop soft feelings for Vita. One day, Vita invites Virginia to her home and takes her on a tour of her landscape. She tells Vita that every time she sits down to write, she feels the words and characters deeply from her heart, and it's only then that she's able to express her feelings. She also encourages Vita to write in that manner to improve her literature, and Vita is really impressed by this way of thinking. Later, Virginia returns home, where Leonard is reading her latest novel. When she asks Leonard for his thoughts on the book, he says it's the best one she's ever written. A few days later, Vita visits Virginia's home and has dinner with her family. Then, Vita invites her to spend the night at her house the next day, which Virginia gladly accepts. As discussed, Vita arrives to pick up Virginia the following day and takes her to her childhood home. There are also two of Vita's friends who welcome Virginia to the house. Later, they all gather for dinner, and Virginia appears to be bothered by the presence of Vita's friends. And right after dinner, Vita takes Virginia to a room and says that she got married in that very spot. She says she misses this house terribly, and when she married and moved away, it felt like a horrible breakup with this place. Hearing this, Virginia feels emotional and holds Vita's hands as they gaze into each other's eyes. They then go to Vita's room, but for some reason, Virginia appears to be upset. When Vita inquires about what's wrong, she mentions that the presence of Virginia's friends made her feel uncomfortable. Hearing this, Vita does not answer anything and sits close to her. She then tries to kiss her, but Virginia refuses, stating that she's tried it with Leonard, but couldn't do it. 
Virginia arrives home the next day and meets up with Nessa and Clive. When Nessa asks if she likes Vita, Virginia replies that she likes her maturity and elegance. However, Virginia believes there's something wrong with her because she can't get intimate with anyone. But Nessa and Clive comfort her by telling her that she is capable of so much love and that physical intimacy is not everything in life. Meanwhile, Harold is trying to persuade Vita to accompany him to Tehran for a few months. She tries to refuse him, but he reminds her that she is the wife of a diplomat and must do her duty. It turns out that Harold is also a homosexual and that they've made arrangements with each other to fulfill their duties as spouses while still allowing each other to be free. Vita ultimately has no choice but to agree with him. She then goes to Virginia's house and invites her on the trip. However, Leonard refuses to let Virginia go with her. She then tells Vita that she will miss her horribly and that her life will be empty without her. Then they finally kiss each other and they say their goodbyes before leaving. Throughout Vita's stay in Tehran, she and Virginia continue to write letters to each other, expressing their love for one another. One afternoon, while eating lunch with her family, Virginia misses Vita and talks about how she sees society differently than other people. She tells her family that the more she tries to understand Vita, the more confused and lost she becomes. Just then, she begins to break down and tries to express herself, but no words come out of her mouth. The thing is, Virginia has been battling bipolar disorder ever since she was young. Thus, she would frequently have severe depression and manic episodes. When the doctor arrives, he advises Leonard not to stress her out and to take a break from writing for a while. Later, Virginia writes a letter to Vita stating that she has been really sick recently and has been sleeping for the past six weeks. Vita becomes impatient after this and forces Harold to return. He initially refuses her, but after seeing her stubbornness, he eventually agrees to let her go. A few days later, Vita returns from Tehran and goes to Virginia's home. However, Leonard won't allow her to meet Virginia since he believes Vita is the cause of her illness. She then tells Leonard that she can make her happy and leaves after promising to return later. Vita returns the next day and Leonard agrees to send Virginia with her for the sake of her happiness. The two ladies return to Vita's place where they kiss each other and eventually get intimate. After spending time with Vita, Virginia feels really happy and her health improves as well. She then returns home and informs Nessa that she has slept with Vita. Meanwhile, Harold is furious with Vita for initiating an affair with Virginia, as that could make a scandal. He believes it will ruin their reputation as well as affect the kids. But Virginia assures him that they're only friends and that she's not in love with Virginia. The next day, Vita goes to Virginia and asks her to leave her husband and elope with her to another country. However, Virginia claims she can't leave her husband since he's been there through her highs and lows and she loves him. Vita feels upset that she means nothing to her and leaves the place. Over the next few days, Virginia continues to write to Vita but receives no response. One day, Nessa holds an exhibition of her paintings and Virginia is thrilled that Vita will be there. She keeps waiting for her and asks everyone when she'll arrive. Meanwhile, Vita arrives with another woman named Mary. Virginia feels betrayed seeing this and leaves the party immediately. She then goes near a river to end her life but is unable to do so. Leonard searches for her everywhere and eventually finds her at home and feels relieved. Virginia informs him that she has an idea to write a story about a man named Orlando who was once a man but has now transformed into a woman. She wants to write this story based on Vita and dedicate it to her. Virginia calls Vita and explains her intention to write a story about her in the form of Orlando. She informs Vita that they need to meet regularly and that Vita needs to open up for her to better understand her. Virginia also asks her to take a picture to include it in her book. She then begins writing her manuscript with the help of her lover. A few months later, Virginia finally finishes writing her novel. When Vita's mother reads the draft, she becomes enraged and tells Virginia not to publish it since it will destroy Vita's reputation. But Vita becomes delighted when she reads it. She then visits Virginia and declares that this is the most beautiful and insightful book she's ever read. She claims that she must be a narcissist because she was in love with Orlando. Then she professes her feelings for Virginia and invites her to come with her again. This time, Virginia accepts her and prepares to leave with her. Meanwhile, Leonard arrives and tries to stop her, claiming that being with Vita will destroy her in the end. Regardless, Virginia ignores his requests and eventually leaves with Vita. One evening, while Vita is sleeping, Virginia finds her letter written to Mary. She can sense what's going on, but she knows she can't intervene in Vita's affairs. This breaks her heart and she runs out of the house in misery. 
But soon, Vita finds her and brings her back to the house. At that point, Virginia understands that Vita will never be able to love her entirely, and they end the affair. The film then concludes by revealing that Orlando outsold all of Virginia's prior novels, changing the path of her career as a successful writer. Vita and Virginia's friendship lasted long after their relationship ended until Virginia died in 1941. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.